Hey guys, John Crisp here with AstroProductReviews.com. It's February of 2019, near the end. I think it's the 24th today, I'm not 100% sure. And I've been struggling with uh, tracheal stenosis for the last five weeks and I'm just starting to get my voice back and feel a little bit better. So I've been off camera and off YouTube for a while. Uh, in the meantime, I have acquired some gear. There's a William Optics uh, telescope right here uh, on uh, Explore Scientific EOS 2 mount with PCM. Eight that I'll be doing a review of. I've acquired a few new cameras, but I've been sick, so I haven't done any reviews, so I feel a little bit remiss. But I have had my Skyshed pod now for a couple of months. I installed it in December of 2018. It's now, like I said, the end of February of 2019, and I have had a few clear nights. It's been a very frustrating winter. Uh, we've had a lot of sleet, snow, high winds. We're gonna have straight line winds tomorrow, 60 miles an hour. Uh, but I'll share the images that I have been able to get, and I've had time to get my pod kind of organized and set up how I want, put um, storage containers in the uh, equipment bays that I wanted to get done. I've got a couple of scopes set up on my mount and really now it's just a matter of waiting for clear nights, <laughs> which has been annoying as we've talked about. I don't see anything in the forecast for the next 10 days that looks like it might even be an option. But we'll keep our fingers crossed. I put my little magic sky shed pod out here on the table hoping it might give us some good mojo. Um, but we'll go from there. I'll do most of this off camera uh, just because of my voice and I'll narrate over some of the images as I go through my pod and we'll go from there. Welcome to Cloudy Sky Observatory and you can see we've got gray skies still. It seems perpetual. I'll do a quick overview of the dome here. So on my mount here I've got my Celestron Edge HD 11 inch and I'm using Hyperstar and I'll show a picture of that. F2 off the front primarily, although I do have the focal reducer off the back and I do planetary and other objects. If it's a smaller deep sky object, I'll shoot off the back and just take the hyperstar off and I like that flexibility. And the William Optics GT102 triplet is over here on the left side with the Orion 60mm guide scope and star shoot auto aligner and I'm using pulse guiding on USB. I do not use the ST4 cable and very happy with this setup. I use my use this for my lunar eclipse shots. Uh, the only night I've been able to use the William Optics uh, on the side-by-side -side saddle. On the back here, I'm using the ZWO 1600mm Pro. And then I have it set up on the ZWO electronic filter wheel here. And I'm using LRGB Hydrogen Alpha Oxygen 2 Sulfur 3 filters, and they're the ZWO filters. And I did the trip, the Triffid shot that you'll see later is shot with that setup. Got the field flattener and rotator on here as well, which is really nice. I got my Telrad finder over here, and I've got a dovetail setup. I've played around with where I put my guide camera, and that's that setup. So then I've got a USB 3 powered hub here on the saddle. The Ioptron mount comes with a single USB 3 cable, but it doesn't work on my mount. I need a repeater so I don't mess with it, but the USB 2 hub over here on the left does work and I'm still working through my rat's nest of cabling over here. I've got the MicroTouch Starzona focus controller here. This is not the wireless version, it's the wired version, so I'm running it through USB 2 on the computer. This has been a huge win for me and I'm going to do a whole subject matter on finding focus. And here's the MicroTouch controller motor and it's on a feather touch focuser. I think has worked really well with Sequence Generator Pro. I have everything running on the Ioptron CEM120. This is the base model, not the encoder version, or I'd have red anodized knobs, which would be the big indicator of the difference. Very happy with this mount. I have had very high productivity when we've had clear skies. Thrown away very few images. This thing has done a really good job for me, and I have it sitting on their tripe here which has been really nice. I have 200 pounds of sandbags underneath there just to dampen vibration. I don't image from within inside of my dome and I'll do a whole sequence on my workflow at some point, uh, but very happy with it. I couldn't do anything permanent. I didn't want to do anything permanent. So this is on the deck with posts going down to the ground and it's, it's working really well. And the sandbags are gonna, I know, make a big difference helping out here. And then you can see kind of power runs out here and everything. And, I've got the Thousand Oaks optical dew straps that run through. That's a battery sustainer trickle charger for a deep cycle battery over here on the right. And the only thing I run off of the, the deep cycle battery are the heater straps. And you can see my temperature indicator here. There's a probe up underneath the dew strap. And you need 10 degrees difference between ambient and the optics here. And that 
gives me that indication so I can set the power where I need it. And that's been a really nice feature. And then you can see I've got a little heater over in the background there and I'll talk about that more in a sec. Uh, but this thing has really worked well for me and I'm very happy with that setup in that regard. And like I said, still trying to figure out some of my cable management stuff here. It's tricky when you have all this gear running on here and USB controlling it all. There's the GPS sender. And one note here on the, the mount, this is it's hard to see there, but that's serial number five. This is the fifth CEM120 mount made. And there's the GPS sender, and you can see my hand controller over on the left. I don't really use the hand controller much, um, but I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But very happy with the setup. You can see how many counterweights I'm having to run to balance all this gear. And just set this configuration up, like I mentioned, still kind of working my way around through it here as I move to the other side. Uh, the setup really works, and it fits everything here with the mount and the, the two different scopes and the whole setup fit inside the dome easily. There's plenty of room, even with the dew shield sitting on the Edge HD. It fits, the dome closes nicely, and everything works. And you can see the lock knobs here and the, the piggyback saddles that I've got running here. And again, I'm a little bit embarrassed by the cabling there, but still work in progress because I'm not sure I'm going to keep both those scopes running at the same time. And then we'll move around, and I'll talk about some of the equipment bays that I have. I have three bays in my pod. I didn't paint the dome yet because I want to use that for f flat frames and that's working well for me as well. So moving around to the front here, this is the ZWOASI 294 MC Pro one shot color. Just got this camera, very happy with it so far, USB 3 here. Sitting on the Hyperstar and I've got a shot of Orion that I shot with this because of course everybody has to go shoot Orion as their first subject it seems like just because it's so easy to identify what you're doing right and wrong and then uh, love the diffraction spike focuser now that comes on the William Optics and everything's been working. So in the equipment bay that's behind the mount and scope I've got my 12 volt battery here it's I don't remember the capacity but it's a deep cycle battery and that works really well. I don't like having power running off of that battery once the dew straps are on. I just want clean noise for my camera so I run those off AC converters. And then I've got storage here you know three drawer storage bin here that I think I paid $20 for the local supply store and that's a piggyback guider scope that I'm still kind of playing around with which one I'm going to use long term and I'm really happy with the equipment bays and you can see I've got the UV spray and I think it's just Krylon paint if I'm not mistaken but I really like that that's in there and that'll help with temperature in the summer and then here's one of my other equipment bays and you can see I've got my covers for the scope and uh, I've got a flat panel here that I do with use for my flat frames another three drawer storage bin a little smaller one my dome locks and in here I've got another camera here, here it is it's a ZWO ASI 385MC it's not the pro or cooled version as you can see so moving around from here uh, again just really happy with the storage bays and everything that we've got. I've got my lighting over here, uh, my security sensor on my door, keep a headlamp there. The lighting really works well. I've seen it in different locations but the wheels roll underneath it basically and it works fine. Haven't had any problems with uh, the wheels interfering with the lights. Here in this bay I keep my computer equipment and I've got this screen here basically it keeps light out of from the laptop getting into the dome and then basically put my laptop over here and I can close that curtain and I'll blow the heater that I keep right there in there which keeps the every equipment warm and my power strips here basically standard stuff what I ha like about this I've got this uh, kilowatt measuring device here I bought this off Amazon and it basically lets me you know see how many amps and kilowatt hours and everything that I'm drawing uh, from my equipment which is really nice because I only have a 15 amp circuit so I don't want to pop that obviously and I do have the heater so I just can monitor this and see how everything works and make sure I get clean power out to the setup here which is really nice here's my hand controller I don't really use a hand controller like I said I plate solve but I do set up and I'll point through the hand controller commands to the general area where I'm going to be shooting and then I let the plate solve but that just makes sure that everything's working like it's supposed to, it's pointing where it needs to go and everything's working because occasionally I'll get a communication error 
Um, here's my heater and that little heater when it's been zero degrees outside I've had the dome when it's shut with the sun out up to almost 70 degrees so that thing is a ceramic heater and it does a good job again I do keep a uh, security system with my dome I've got that on the door there and you know I've got the insulated walls and I've got the UV lining there that uh, you know is an option I think it was 60 bucks or something like that and then over in the window I do keep a uh, infrared motion sensor camera there so if anybody even comes outside I'll be able to see it but yeah, I'm very happy with everything you know the equipment bays have worked well there's my beach chair and I don't image uh, from inside the dome I get everything set up and I'll make sure I'm in general focus and everything's going and then I go inside and I remote into my laptop and I control it that way I could I do have enough Wi-Fi range to be able to do all of it from inside the house, but it's just easier plugging everything into USB 3. So that's my setup. I've been very happy with everything. Loving it so far, and I'll post a few images for you to take a look at.